The Proclamation of London by Francis Parker Jockey Introduction The Proclamation of London, 1949 Throughout all Europe there is a steering today a great super-personal idea, the idea of the Imperium of Europe, the permanent and perfect union of the peoples and nations of Europe. This idea embodies in itself the entire content of the future, for unless this idea is fulfilled there will be no European future. Those who regard this idea which is expressed at this moment in the liberation front as a danger to them wish to destroy it at all costs. Its enemies are, first, the anti-European forces without the Western civilization who, at this moment of history, dominate the entire world, and second, their subservient lackeys within the Western civilization, the reactionary party politicians together with the self-interested forces they represent. Both are united in their blind hatred of this young and vital idea, which is irresistibly releasing forces which threaten to engulf these old powers of reaction, finance capitalism, class war, and Bolshevism. This is addressed to the entire Western civilization, to the colonies planted all over the world, and to the heart and soul of the West, the mother soil and father culture of Europe. It is Europe that is the focus of the historical force of the world. The profundity and strength of this soul and body dominate even those extra-European forces which have just concluded a temporarily victorious war against Europe, and who are now engaging in preparation for war against one another, in which each hopes to push its crude and formless lust for negative conquest even to the mastery of the world. In the plans of their masters of today, the true American people and the Russian people figure only as expendable material. In these two populations there are wide and deep strata which inwardly belong to the Western civilization and who look to the sacred soil of Europe as to their origin, their inspiration and their spiritual home. To these also this proclamation is addressed. By gigantic war, by terror, and by manifold persecution, the party politicians and their extra-European masters have sought and seek to stifle this mighty idea. They have sought in vain to deprive it of voice, and of all means of self-expression, through the written word or the spoken. They themselves thus testify that the Liberation Front is already a power in Europe. Against the organic imperative of the Front, they seek to enlist all the forces of the past. They create thus a spiritual disjunction which compels all men to take their place on the one side or the other. It has become necessary that those who are in the service of this idea should proclaim to the Western civilization the spiritual foundations and significance of the Liberation Front and of the Imperium of Europe, for which the front will clear the way, for this front is the sole creative force of our times. Therefore, the representative adherents of the front from all the former nations of Europe have gathered together in London for the purpose of documenting their outlook, their aim, and their position in the world. This proclamation is published in the original in the German, English, Spanish, Italian, French, and Flemish languages.